Good morning YouTube. It's Saturday morning, January 5th. If you look out the window, it looks like a very pretty day and I guess it is a nice day for January, but it's don't let that bright sun fool you. It's really cold wind. At nighttime it's getting been getting in the teens around here. That doesn't matter in here. We've got an old oil furnace running. 70 degrees in here. Good day to stay in here and get something done. We've already been at it a little bit. We got some got some work done through the week last night I was out here kind of late we have got the inside of our door sanded meaning this area which will be I guess you can call that the door jam area or whatever got that done on both sides been doing a little touch-up work on the cab found a few little imperfections that I want to fix before I put the first give it its first primer also, right there, I found a little kind of a kind of a nick from a, where a grinding wheel had hit it back when I welded this on. It's the first time I had noticed that. A little bit of had to put a little bit of skin on this right here back from when a long time ago when I did the cab corners. I had to replace some of that stuff like that. And something else I did, I was kind of been kind of figuring how I want to tape these doorways off when I do primer this and uh, when I do paint it of course you see I got this tape from the inside but I don't fully trust that because it's held on with duct tape on an area that won't show so we're not worried about the strong duct tape leaving sticky residue or something because that would be behind door panels and stuff like that but I went ahead and uh, brushed say like this area on all the window openings except for the front we're not removing the front window See how I did that with the P I brushed on the POR 15 paint, did it all the way around. This will not matter as if you remember, I removed the uh, window or the door weather stripping from it, so that will be covered up. And as far as that being covered up with black paint, that's good enough for me. Like I said, you won't be able to see it. Actually, the weather stripping comes out to about here. So, and the reason I did that is so I can tape off this. It would make it a lot easier to tape off on this outside area and block all this off with the uh, paper. And that way I can go ahead and spray it and not get any overspray in there. It, it would just make it easier on me. So I went ahead and did that. And what we're going to do today, this video will be over whatever I get done the entire weekend. We're going to go ahead and start disassembling our door hinges. I realize I hadn't ordered any pin kits yet. I already got one removed and I'm going to set up the tripod on the camera and show you how I get those out. Might come in handy. Uh, let's see the... I believe these are the uppers. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure they are because the spring the spring goes on the lowers. but. Before you take something like this apart, it's a good idea to take a photo or do one side at a time. I thought about doing one side at a time. I said, how ah, the hell with that? I want to get these disassembled so I can sandblast them while they are assembled. And I want to paint them disassembled. Because when these are together, as you can see on this one that I haven't taken apart, you're going to have an area you can't get to. And that's an area that, you know, will be rusted. And as the hinge swings, you want to be really picky about the work you do. Try I'm somewhat picky about some things and not picky about others. You know, you it's hard to cover all that area that's under that hinge is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, yeah. But what I did, I went ahead and took a photo of it. And that way, if I take it apart and then when the pins come in, which I just ordered this morning, if the pins come in sometime next week, it's uh, very likely that I will forget exactly how they went together, and it's very easy to do. Something can look really simple when you take it apart, and then if you leave it sitting for a while, and then you go back and put it together, you're like, hmm, how did that go together again? And it's really easy to forget, so it's always good to take photos. And this camera that I've got here, I love it for close-up photos. My old digital camera that did nothing but take photos, it, anything up close was blurred. This thing here, you can... Um, once it focuses, you can take a picture like that and get really detailed photos. But enough talking, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to set up the tripod and show you how I took this one apart. Yeah, this one right here. Okay, now 
that one, I'm just noticing something, that's why I'm hesitating here. Evidently, that one's been replaced before because it's got a cotter pin in it, whereas these do not. And I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to have to grind those pins off to get the old ones out. And the new ones will come, I've seen pictures of them, I ordered them through LMC truck. New ones will come with a pin and a bushing. They look like they're made out of brass or bronze. And the new ones have a groove right about here with a uh, snap ring that goes over the end of them. But it looks to me like I'm going to have to take a cutoff wheel, cut these. Maybe not. We'll stick it up in the vise and tap on it a little bit and see if that pops out of there. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to cut them though. But sub tripod, stay tuned. Okay, as I showed you, these original bushings are a little different than that first one I removed. And I want to make sure I could get them out, or figured out a good way to get them out before I actually made a video on it. I went ahead and got the other top one apart, and it wasn't quite as easy as the first one I did, which someone has replaced at some time or another. Okay, I think how these things are supposed to go together is this is a bushing which is driven in through that side and you got your pin coming up through this way it's got a head on the bottom looks just like that there's your head it comes up through like that and I've got this set up here I've got a piece of pipe under here so that the head something big enough so that the head will go through it and in a perfect world you should be able to beat that pin out of that bushing and it all comes apart but these are so tight that all it does is squeeze your hands together and you can mess up your hinge so what I ended up doing on the first one is I took my grinder and cut off wheel and I cut off this and that just seemed to make it all go so much easier actually the bushing and all will come out easier than that pin which is welded in that bushing with rust and time so Let's try that on video and see if this one works like the other one. It, like I said, it wasn't quite as easy as I thought it was going to be, so I want to make sure I could do it before I made a video on it. First thing I'm going to do, like I said, grinder and cut off wheel. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here, I'm hoping. You just keep grinding to the top of that head, the head of that, uh, Top bushing comes off. much easier. I think go as far as my dry pin will go. There's your pin. Cutting off that bushing makes it a lot easier. Now you have another, you have bushings driven in here. And we'll get those out. Hopefully, hopefully they'll come out easy. Now let's, uh, vice around hopefully I'm not sure how well you can see what I'm doing here move this camera here as you see we've got a bushing here and here the heads on this side and the other side what I'm going to do is just take my punch catch the edge of it hopefully maybe a bolt will work better it's got a flatter surface 
Oh yeah, they, they come out. Those are actual bronze or brass bushings. So they, they come out pretty quick. Pretty easy. Kind of awkward in here. It's really crowded. I got a lot of stuff in the way and you can't get in position you want to get in sometimes. This bigger bolt works a little better, maybe. I don't know. This punch had a flat surface on it. It would be easier. Ah, that just doesn't work very well. There we go. Seems like the bolt works best. And that's... With what I've got to work with, that's the easiest way to get those out of there. thinking that there's a bushing in here, but I guess not. Anyway, that piece that presses down in there like that, or it just kind of... Actually, I was wrong. That was not a bushing up top that we cut off. That is... Well, it, it's kind of a bushing. What it is, I think it's part of the pin. Yeah. It's part of the actual pin, and it's hollow, and I think you it's beaten and mushroomed out like a rivet. So, there you go. That's how that goes together. So, you pretty much have to grind that off. I was thinking maybe it was a bushing that... Um, was pressed in there, or beaten in there, but, but I believe that's how it's made. The old pin, original pin... It's got a hollow end on it, and when they put them in the new, I'm guessing they flattened them out like a rivet. Just like that. So we'll see if the other one goes a little easier. to do it and figure out the best way to do it. So I guess this video might be helpful after all because if you go to thinking that's a bushy and you can crack the pin out of it, don't try it. Just cut it off because that is the actual pin. Like I said, it is mushroomed out. Now we'll go ahead and drive them little brass bushings out of this one. And the next thing we're going to have to do, let me, yeah, I'll show you on this. We're going to have to remove this plate right here. It goes in our compressor blowing a chip release valve again. Everything seems to mess up in cold weather, I tell you. It's aggravating. Anyway, we've got to remove this. This is the actual spring and I've got those ordered too because this one is broke and as you can see that's what your spring is supposed to look like so if you got a door that doesn't seem to want to stay open on you you always have to prop something up against it the truck sitting on a slight incline and the door just slams shut on you all the time probably because this spring right here is broke and there's your broken one and it looks like it's riveted in so let me do one and then we'll try to make a video on that.
Okay, we got one spring out. It's pretty darn simple. As you can see, okay, it goes in just like that. And all it is is this pin. You see it's got one pin on one side. You got one hole. And it just pretty much beats in there, kind of like a rivet. All I did was uh, stick it on top of the vise and beat it out. And I should be able to stick my punch right there. You can see the pin coming through and just... Um, Beat it out. The other one came out really easy. Let's see if this one will most likely make a liar out of me and give me some trouble. You know how that goes. Let's see how it goes. Oops. Came out pretty easy. A little bit more beating than the other, but yeah, that's how that goes. And really, I probably don't have to replace this one, but, you know, you whenever something goes together like that, that's bare metal on top of bare metal, you get rust, and that's why things go wrong, I guess. Okay, we got one more thing I need to figure out how to do. I'm going to do it on one, then we'll show you on the other, and that is, we're going to go ahead and remove our rollers. I ordered those two. Probably didn't have to, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's see, hopefully... These will go easy. Let's see how easy that pin comes out of there. Let's see if we can do it without having to brace it all up and everything. I'm not moving my vise, but the pin's coming out. I'll tighten up my vise a little bit. Let's get the pin up in there. Ah, you got it. Coming out. Don't want to get that tapered dry pan stuck in there. It's a little bit too big on top. And there it goes. That's all there is to that. There's your rollers. Something else I noticed on these hinges, you remember? I stamped them, but on this part of the hinge, LF, LS, I'm sorry, left hand side, which is driver side, and RS, right hand side, which of course is passenger side. Okay, next thing we gotta do, we get to um, sandblast. All I'm going to go ahead and say my blast my hinges. I don't want to mix up, get uh, one hinge confused with the other, you know, one half of it with the other is what I mean. So we'll do them one at a time, sandblast a pair, you know, a set, and then lay them over here, put another in the tank, do that. And I also have 20 bolts to sandblast. Once I get them sandblasted, I can screw them back in the threads on the cab and in the doors, and I will primer and paint. Whenever I primer and paint, the bolts will already be in there and they will get painted as well. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do all that and I'll show you how everything looks when it's sandblasted and cleaned up. We can't put the hinges back together today because I just ordered the bushings and springs and rollers this morning. So that will be in probably late next week. But let's see what else we can get done today.